I first started experiencing mental health symptoms when I was around 24. I was unemployed. Um, it was a little bit after the recession and I was struggling to find a journalism job and I was living in my mom's home and I just felt completely isolated and alone. I felt like a burden to my mom because I wasn't able to find a job. And I fortunately got into um, USC in Los Angeles for the journalism program. And I thought that the scholarship that I received would uh, cure my depression. And you know, I thought that, oh, I'm good now. I have a, a, a program I'm in, um, I'm, I'm heading towards employment. Um, and then, you know, I ended up on a Los Angeles highway wanting to die, you know, speeding, going upwards of 90 miles per hour. And I realized that I couldn't outrun depression, that I had to face it head on. And that's when I finally got my uh, major depressive disorder diagnosis. Depression looks like, for me, um, irritability, you know, a difficulty being around loud environments, where there's a lot of people, where everyone's super happy and boisterous. Um, it can look like insomnia from having ruminating thoughts about wanting to die, about being unworthy, about being inferior. Um, and for me, living with borderline personality disorder, BPD is like an engine that amplifies all my other mental health symptoms. So the depression that I experience can be at a heightened level and heightened state to the point where it can trigger suicidal gestures and it can get really scary for me because, you know, the people in my life may not know where I am. I may leave and go places that I shouldn't be going to. I may be having thoughts and maybe saying things to them that are really scary. And so the BPD, what it does is it creates this like buildup of emotional intensity that feels like almost like a rumbling underneath my skin. At 24, um, when I started to exhibit um, crisis symptoms, um, I went to the USC counseling office and was uh, met with a black counselor and a white counselor. Um, and I was so, uh, distraught, I was crying through the whole, the whole session. Um, and I could just remember the tissue just like being clutched in my hands as I'm just bawling. Um, and so I was expecting to potentially be offered a therapist or some sort of emergency care. Um, but what happened was that I was threatened with a police escort to the hospital. And so I was told by these two counselors that I need to drop out of school and I have to go in the back of a police car to the hospital. And in that moment, as vulnerable as I was, I had to switch into a mode of basically defending myself so that I can come out of this hole. And so I basically rejected their um, advice of having a police escort sent to the hospital. Um, and eventually I negotiated with them and I was able to just get a therapist. And the therapist that I saw um, diagnosed me with major depressive disorder. And the first thought that I had in my mind was like, that's a white people's disease. I don't have depression. And I didn't know anybody black who dealt with depression, at least with the clinical term depression. I didn't know anybody. And so that combination of being threatened with a police escort to the hospital and this notion of, I don't know anybody black who, who feels the way that I feel, it started me on a journey to finding black folks who live with depression. And so I started to talk about my experiences online. Um, and then at the same time, I entered a new graduate program the following year and I named it, um, the name the project that I was working on, Depressed While Black. And I was just basically trying to write my way into a community of black folks who deal with depression. And so as I was writing about my experiences and sharing online, I started connecting with people all over the world who felt the same way that I did. And so that kind of birthed Depressed While Black, like the online community and the nonprofit that it is today.
So right before I had my first psychiatric hospital experience, I was living in New York and I was dealing with a lot of job rejection. I was trying to be a professional writer and be in kind of the literary world and, or the journalism world, and I just wasn't getting any success. I had all these internships that were basically unpaid, and they would constantly say, you're the best in intern we had. Sorry, we don't have a job for you. And so I was wrestling with what is my future gonna look like? My program is basically over. I have to leave this apartment. I don't know where I'm gonna go. And my mood just dropped out of nowhere. I can't even explain how or why. I had a great year on uh, antidepressant, um, but my mood just dropped out of nowhere. And I remember calling my best friend at the time and I just told her I did it. You know, I attempted, I did it. And I was a mess. Um, I had to tell my roommate who was studying um, for, um, to be a lawyer at that time. I had asked my roommate to help me get to the hospital. And that was a lot to ask of somebody, you know, She's deep in her studies. And she. we took a taxi to the hospital. Um, they had me in the emergency room. And something weird happened. Um, basically, I was fine when I got to the emergency room. I was like flirting with the nurse. <laughs> I, I had the strangest mood swing. And so I was like basically fine in the emergency room. I was like, you know, reading magazines. Um, yeah, I was pretty okay. Um, so they brought me to the psychiatric ER after they cleared me medically. And um, they told me that there was this place, this hospital that was really great um, further up in the state and that you're gonna get help there, you're gonna get the support that you need. And I got really excited about it, and I was like, I wanna go. And miraculously, my best friend who was in North Carolina f flew like overnight. So I woke up to my best friend in the hospital, and it was just like so much joy, like so much excitement and love seeing her there with me. And so we were in this together. And so my best friend and I were like, okay, we're gonna go to this hospital, I'm gonna get better. When I went to the hospital that they sent, they wanted to send me to, it looked like a spa, like they had a gift shop and the carpet, like beautiful carpet, it looked like a, a, a luxury, luxury hotel. And, um, so we were just like, when we get to our room, we're gonna like lay on the bed and relax. And we're gonna like, you know, relax on the bed and sleep and do all that stuff. Um, but then I went to see the social worker and the social worker pulled up a blog post that I wrote not that long ago. And the blog post was just a very com comedic suicide letter. So basically, I was like joking, like you better have my like favorite restaurant at cater the funeral, like just joking. But it was a suicide letter, and that's when I knew that things were gonna go bad, because that level of surveillance, I said they're gonna use that against me.